Hi everyone, Notchfingers here with you again to do a, a bit of a different kind of tutorial. I'm going to be doing a very advanced tutorial today, so it's going to require quite a bit of background knowledge into how the work works and, and, and working with the and things. Today we're going to be talking about menus and button systems in particular. So, in a lot of my applications that I've got, they, they, they tend to look very, very polished and very, very clean because I've worked very, very hard on the graphical interface and on the menus and on interaction with the system as well. Most command line programs that you'll use, and indeed most of the programs that are pre-installed on here, you know, your, I'm just going to load for us here, like your, you know, your LS, your DIRs and things, these are all just very, very simple printouts, they don't require a very careful interface, but for applications that are a bit more complicated, you do require one. Take your edit menus here, for example, you've always got a, a footer at the bottom of your, um, your table and you actually have special ways of interacting by pressing the control key and actually change the way the application works. So there's definitely things that you have to do when you consider the way that you're going to be able to produce your programs. Now I like to go with fairly clean interfaces that take up quite a bit of space so they feel nice and clean, you don't have any difficulty knowing what's going on um, and they're well well spaced out and well, well laid out. So I'm going to be showing you how to make one of those today. So I'm going to show you what we're going to be building. So. Um, this is the sort of thing I'm hoping to sort of show you how to go. It's going to be a modular interface that's going to allow you to have um, just simple buttons like this. So, you know, you've got your um, your three selections that you can use the arrow keys to move up and down with and select one. And then you'll be able to press the enter key to change the state of the menu as well. So that will allow you to navigate in and out of things and quit the application. So very, very simple stuff. Well, no, it's not simple. This is Again, this is quite complicated. But um, the, the core behind it and what we're trying to achieve is, is quite simple and we'll lay it out. So let's um, edit our menus first and let's get started. So I've got some very simple functions to begin with just here for us. So we've got like our print centered code here, for example, which just print things in the center of the screen and our print right, which prints things the right side of the screen is for justification. And at the top of any application we're going to be doing lots of printing on the screen, you should always have this statement here, local wh equal to term dot get size. Now the term library is what we're going to be using almost ex primarily in this, um, in this program. So if you just go help term, this API, essentially is everything we use for printing things onto the terminal. So we've got our right, our clear, which removes everything on the screen, clear line, which just clears one line. You can set the cursor's position by pressing the X and Y keys. You can set the blink if you want to, um, which is good for some applications as well. And then of course you've got your, being able to set the size of the, um, the, the, of the terminal screen. So getting the size of the screen, which is what we use to be able to turn the X and the Y coordinates, and the scrolling and redirecting, but that's, that's all sort of for a bit of a late date. So let's go back to menus. Now, the reason we, we're doing this here, as opposed to just assuming that it's going to be 50 by 18, is because there are, of course, different size menu, um, different size screens all over the place. You've got your monitors, which can be of customizable size, and your turtles as well. So it's really important that you keep that in mind when you're working with um, your menu systems. Now, what we're going to start with here, I think, is we're probably going to be looking at adding some basic information about the state of the menus we're going to be staying in. So we have three menus that we know we're going to have. We're going to have the main menu, then we're going to have picture one and picture two, and then we're going to have a quick function. So they're going to be four separate essential functions. So we have to keep those in a menu state. So we're going to go local menu state is equal to... Um, we're going to start with just calling that main for the second. This will just be our main menu. This will, It'll be a string that we use to display essentially what we're up to. And we're also going to keep local select and so whenever you've selected an option, which is going to be this one, essentially whenever we've got like a, a selection when we hit the up and down arrow keys, we have to track essentially which one we've selected, like we select the top one or the bottom one or the middle one, stuff like that, and that'll be stored in this numerical value here called select. Don't worry, I'll talk you through how this is going to work a little bit later on. There's one last thing you're going to have to add here, now this is a bit complicated, but just follow me here, I'm just going to call this MOPT, our menu options, it's going to be equal to a table, if you haven't seen this before, this is a table, and in this we're going to create a separately a separate index called main like this so like a dictionary index here this is our key is going to be main and you can see that's the same as our menu state so whenever we have a menu state we can just use that to access the MOPT which is going to have some values in it as well this will be in itself a table and this table will contain one thing right now and that's a third table so we're going to have a table inside a table inside a table and that's going to be called options and this essentially is going to be the things that we can select in our menu system. So remember in our first menu, just go back beforehand, and we're just going to say sol n. Um, and you see how we've got three options there? We can select picture one, picture two, and quit. These three options here are essentially going to be what's inside that table. It's going to store for in our main menu state, there are three things we can select. We can select picture one, we can select picture two, we can select quit. And that's what we're going to do. So we're going to go back here menus, and we're just going to go back down to where we were, and we're going to change this to say we have, have options, it's going to be equal to this third table, which is going to contain, let's call it pick one, Just this is just a key we're going to use, remember it's not the actual, the string, just a key, pick two, 
and finally quit. And that'll be fine, I think. And that will do for the second. Now we have enough, at least, to, to get us started. Don't worry about it if you don't understand where we're going from here. We'll, we'll, we'll sort of work on it as we go along. Alright, now that we've got some of the state stuff down, let's actually think about printing stuff out on the screen, because that's probably the stuff that you think that you're probably the most interested in the moment in. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a new function. Make sure you add it above this area here, above the menu, so we're actually going to have menu state. And this area will be here for the menu state and stuff. Up here, this is going to be where our draw menu stuff is going to be held here. So we're going to have a, a method, we're going to call it function draw main for the second. And this will draw our main menu. So, how do we want to draw a main menu? First, first thing we should probably do is term.clear. This will get rid of everything that's on the screen for us, so we have a nice blank slate to work with. Alright, next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to print those menu options that I had beforehand, the picture 1, the picture 2, the picture 3, right? So, I printed those in the centre of the screen, so we can use my print centre function, this is actually print it in the direct centre of the screen. So what we do is we here go print centred like this. So the first option was picture one, like this, that was what we named it, and we have to choose the Y coordinate, and what coordinate we choose, I'm going to choose just out of the hat um, an 8, so a couple of units down the screen, so that should be fine. Now, um, I should probably have mentioned this beforehand, computer screens, much like mathematical graphs, they use Cartesian coordinates, so we do use a simple XY system, and essentially the X and the Y points to a certain point on the screen. So for example, we have like a 1.1, 15, 15, and they will all point to areas on the screen. However, unlike the Cartesian coordinate system, which you might be more familiar with in mathematics, where that one has the bottom left typically being the origin of the screen, and in that way X is, um, sorry, Y is on the positive when it goes up, and X on the positive when it goes right. In computer screens, the top left corner of the screen, that's the origin. So Y actually starts at 1 at the top left and it goes down as it increases. So the term 8 is actually going to be from the top, if we start here at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, it's this line here. So you can see it's sort of about a third of the way down the screen, so that'll be fine for the second. So let's do that, that'll be good. So we've printed out, print centred, um, our picture dot one. so a picture one rather. Next thing we can do is we're going to print our second option, picture 2. I'm going to evenly space this, and I'm going to put that at 12, I think, so we're going to put that four spaces down, and then I'm going to have print centered quit, like that, and this will just be near the very bottom of the screen. Now, if I want to have it near the bottom of the screen, I could say 16, to say 2 from the bottom, but what if the screen is bigger than that, or if it's smaller than that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go H minus 1, H minus 2, actually I'm going to go H minus 2. Right, so that'll mean take the height of the screen, which is the very, very bottom, bottom putmost coordinate, and then take 2 away from that, and that'll be where I'm going to print this next piece. Remember the WH I have defined at the top of the, of the method, you have forgotten already, WH there, so not get size. So that's what we're going to be using for the, our bottom of the screen. So now that that's been done, let's actually have a go at that method. So what we're going to do is going to go draw main, just put that at the very bottom of your code there, and let's see what it looks like. Okay, so that's beginning to look pretty good. So we've got our picture one, picture two, and quit, and each three of those options are being displayed on the screen nicely for us. So we've got the semblance of a system working. Now, although that looks pretty good, it looks empty and a bit boring, and um, because I want to be a bit fancy with this application, not unnecessarily, but a little bit fancy, I'm actually going to, um, sorry, CDSLN, I am actually want to include a header, so I'm just going to go menus here. Now take a look at the header here. What I've got here beforehand, I've actually got a few things here. I've got my menu tutorial at the very top, I've got a nice big um, long line there, and I've got my name written at the very, very bottom there as well, so that can be useful for that too. So, um, let's make a function that does that as well. So we're going to go back into our edit menus, and we're going to create a function that's going to be able to print that out for us too. So we're going to go function... header. Alright, so, now, you can see beforehand I had this turn clear here, this is now a dangerous thing to have in here, because that actually might erase the header after I've drawn it, so I'm going to remove that from here, and I'm instead going to place that right after this. So that way, the turn clears, and then we draw header, like that. So that will work much better. Okay, so now that's been done, let's actually draw the thing. So the very first thing I have beforehand is I want to print centered at the very top of the screen, I want to print out and let's just call this picture viewer like that and we're going to put this at index 1 which is like that so that'll be at the very very top of the screen in the dead center which would be fine next thing I want to do is I want to print centered and I want to print out that very very long list of things here like this 
and I'll put that at index 2. Now I wanted the this thing to actually reach from one end of the screen to the other. Now I could do that by just doing this, but that's really lazy. And more to the point, it's not the best way to do this, because remember, the, um, the, the monitor actually might be of a different size. So how would you make it so you have the entire screen filled, or the entire length of the screen filled with that line? We're going to use this method called string dot rep. That is repeat a pattern, and this pattern is going to be a single character of that line there. How many times do we want to repeat that pattern? The width of the screen. That's how I want to do that. So we just close that bracket up there like that nicely, and that will print out that whole thing there. And then at the very bottom of the screen, I'm just going to go print right by nitro fingers again, and I'm just going to have that as height of the screen. So that'll print at the very, very bottom of the screen. So let's see what that looks like. So unless, so we're just going to go menus. Okay. So that's looking pretty good. However, it looks as though I've gone for the wrong index there. So I'm just going to edit menus again. And let's see what I've done. Print centered string dot repeat width by two by nitro fingers. Ah, yes, of course, I've, um, the problem is because this is printing at the one screen, it's not printing out correctly. So it, it is there, don't worry, it's just that we can't see it because it's 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 drawing itself a little bit strangely. So anyway, the point is you can see that, that that's working quite nicely and looking all right. So um, that's all looking good. If I hide this last thing here, like this, you'll see it properly. So there you go, and that's working much better there. If you add the head, it's, it's drawing a little bit too high. So, menu. so now that we've got that working, quite nicely, and that's beginning to look pretty good. I think it's time to add some of the functionality of the, the buttons doing things in our code. So, this is the next tricky step. So what we're going to do, now that we've got this working nicely, is we're going to change it so that we're going to, yeah, we're going to completely turn on its head and completely change the way this program works. So, instead of just having this code like this, we're going to actually have to have a special function that can allow us to cycle between menu states, and this is going to be called our run function. And this is usually quite large, we tend to have its own little space for it. So I'm just going to go function run menu like this. It doesn't have to have any parameters or anything like that. So what we're going to do is while true do, so it has to be in an infinite loop and and what I'm usually going to do is I want to have that term dot clear in here because we're going to reprint each time something happens in the menu and I want to do that um, print header function that I had before which is nice and then we'll just for the second this is temporary but we're going to have that print main here as well. Remember that is going to have to change because it might be a different menu state depending on what we're working with here. So. So what I want to do is I want to be able to get input from my keyboard. So I want to be able to get the up and the down and the enter keys. That way I can say if I've hit the up key, I want to move to the next option. If I hit the bottom key, I want to hit go to the previous option like that, right? So how do we do that? Um, so it's not actually, it's not too tricky. What we're going to do is write this essentially line for line. It's local id comma key is equal to os dot pull event key. Okay, what does that mean? OS.pull event is essentially a function that will listen for something to happen in your computer, and it can be anything. It can be adding a monitor to the side of the screen. It can be putting a disk into the, uh, the disk drive. It can be um, a redstone signal changing. It can be receiving a red net message. It can be hitting a character. It can be anything. In this particular case, we specified I want it to be an event that's listening for a key being struck on the keyboard. That's what this literally means: striking a key. So the ID that's returned here, this is the, one, the first return type is ID, which will essentially return um, what kind of event we've pulled. So this will always be key because we specified it. But what's really interesting here is this this um, this value here, key, is actually going to be a numeric value that tells us which keyboard has, um, element has been struck. Now just for your reference here, this will be useful for later on, the up arrow key is always going to be equal to the key code of 200, the down arrow key is always equal to the reference of 208, and the enter key is always equal to the reference of 28. Uh, something I've just come to learn over over time. So that's these are things that you can remember. In this particular case, they're really going to help us. So we can actually change our application state depending on what sort of menu we've chosen. So what we're going to say is going to go if um, key is equal to 200, then okay. Now remember before this is a little way back now, but if you you may remember that I actually had this thing here called select, and this is supposed to keep track of which option. I've selected, so it's going to be either pick one, pick two, or pick three. So if I've got one, it should be selecting pick one. If I've got two, it should be pick two. If I've got quit, it should be a uh, selection be equal to three. Does that make sense? Well, okay, well I hope so. So what we're going to do is essentially we're going to go if key is equal to two hundred. So that means if I have hit the two hundred key, then I want my select to be equal to select minus one. Because in that way, I've pressed the up key, which means I want to be going back to one previously in our menu options. So if I'm on picture two, I want to go back up to picture one. Does that make sense? Well, yeah, hopefully it does. So then we have an... Um